Getting Ukraine's civilian population to safety continues to be a massive operation. And for months, Terrell Germain Starr, host of the Black Diplomats podcast and a friend of our show, has not only been reporting from the ground, but he's helping people to find safety all across Ukraine. After about three months there, Terrell is now in Poland, but he assisted a few more people on his way out of the country. Yesterday, Terrell tweeted this photo saying he escorted this grandmother from Kiev to Warsaw, Poland, uh, and picked up another woman who managed to escape from Mariupol. Earlier this morning, Terrell posted this on Twitter, quote, I've been outside of Ukraine for less than 24 hours, and it feels very odd. My mind and my body are still in Ukraine, even as I'm sitting in the heart of Warsaw. Terrell Germain Starr is a journalist and non-resident senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. He joins me now from Warsaw. Uh, Terrell, it, your perspective has been remarkable since before this war started. You and I were talking. You were in. Uh, you were in uh, Kiev. You were going around t talking to people who were preparing for war. You now have a slightly different perspective. You're in Warsaw, a city that is not affected by this, except the number of refugees who are there. Tell me what you're thinking this morning. Well, this is the first night where I didn't have to worry about the possibility of a Russian missile uh, hitting someone that I know or in being in proximity to it and not hearing explosions. That's the main thing. It feels when I that tweet saying if it feels odd, it feels surreal because you spent much of your time becoming acclimated to a war environment. And so now it's just silence and Everything is opening, you know, kind of, you know, it's functioning as normal. I mean, uh, all things considered COVID, but it, it but, but, um, you know, the last, uh, I brought in a, a woman, uh, 80, 83 years old, who's legally blind to her grandson uh, from a uh, naturalized citizen of the United States who happens to be at the same hotel I'm at right now. So that's the last kind of remnants of me being in the country, but still. I, I feel like I'm, I know I'm in Warsaw, but my body and my mind psychologically, I can't break the fact that I still feel like I'm in Ukraine. I've been watching who you've been talking to. I've been watching who you've been helping. You have been helping people without regard to their status, their health, their needs, their color, their age, their race, or their religion. But you did tweet that that um, I'm grateful for the the the, the things that good things people say about you. But I'm stressful because I'm black, and refugees who look like me aren't being seen with the same humanity. It's painful to witness. Tell me a little bit more about that, please. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I that, that's the dichotomy that we have as black people or people of color who have a conscience about these things as we are in, you know, for lack of a better word, white country. So when people are asking me to bring, you know, hey, Terrell, people reach out to me and say, well, for example, with this grandmother, hey, Terrell, can you help with my grandmother? She's in Kiev. I didn't hesitate about it. I, I, I bought a, I hired a vehicle, a, a driver to bring us from Kiev to Lviv where you are. And then from there, we had to stage for a night um, at an apartment that I rented. And then we had to go through the um, Polish border. And so the Polish border now, obviously, is not nearly as congested as it was when the war got started. But I do that without hesitation. But, you know, so often when you see black and brown people go and, you know, who, who, are, who need the same treatment, they don't get it as much. And it's heartbreaking because... I don't have any type of regard for regard of, of color or anything, as you said, but I know that the reception, the, the narratives, the stories of being heroes and the triumph, um, the humanity that the people are getting. And I'm very happy that they're, that the people who I'm helping and more and thousands and millions more are getting that. But people who look like me don't. And, and again, just being somebody who loves Ukraine and loves doing what I do. I just, at the back of my mind, I wonder what, what, what people look like me be treated the same and given the same media narrative. And, and as history shows, they have it. And it's just something that's, that underpins all the work I do. And it's something that I always think about, even if I don't always say it. Well, that's but that and, and the work you're doing may help to change that narrative. And that's the important part. You're saying it. It's hard to hear that kind of stuff because um, because we just we don't want to face some of our, our flaws. They're in the war zone. These people are in the war zone, uh, Ali. These people are in the war zone. Yeah. 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 They're in the war zone, Ali. And so it's yeah. different. No, I don't want to kind of burden. I don't want to have to burden them with that. This idea of, OK, you know, these racial politics or whatever. But 
you know, um, and, and I don't really talk about it too much because, again, they're in a, you know, these Ukrainians are definitely in the war zone. But I'm speaking more to the American people about, hey, when we think about our resources, when we think about who do we help and what type of sympathy do we provide, are we doing this, to, are we giving black and brown people the same respect and love and care and tenderness as Ukrainians? And, and the primary reason why I think that there's a difference is because too often it's the American that's the aggressor against black and brown people. Because for Ukrainians, America and the EU is the savior. For people who look like us, Ali, are many times, unfortunately, if we have to keep it real, it's not the case. You make a good point, my friend. Thank you. Uh, enjoy safety and security for a little while. It feels very different, doesn't it? Terrell Germain Starr is a non-resident <laughs> senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center, and he's a founder and the host of the Black Diplomats podcast. It's, it's really worth following him. He does bring us some interesting and, and different perspectives on stories that we think we know a lot about. Right after the break, I'm going to speak with a member of the Ukrainian parliament, Kira Rudik. She's 36 years old. She was once a software engineer, then an election official, and now she's a member of the resistance. She carries a gun with her every day.